Paul's greetings and thanksgiving. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. Whereas most letter writers today sign their name at the end of their correspondence, it was customary in the Greek world for a writer to identify himself or herself at the beginning of a letter. Paul followed this custom and also established his authority to instruct the church about spiritual matters by describing himself as one called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Apparently, a number of people in the church at Corinth were at odds with Paul, who had founded the church about five years before writing this letter by letting the people know that God had appointed him to a divine task. He reasserted his apostleship, which was the reason for the Corinthians to be careful to adhere to his instructions. The apostle's companion, while he was in Ephesus writing this letter, was Sothenus. Some Bible scholars conjecture that Sothenus was the same man who was the ruler of the synagogue in Corinth. If these scholars are correct, then Sosthenes apparently became a Christian under Paul's teaching. The fact that Paul referred to him as our brother, implying that he was well known in Corinth, lends more weight to the theory that Sosthenes had been a ruler of the Corinthian synagogue. After calling himself an apostle, Paul addressed the believers in Corinth as the church of God in Corinth. By noting that the church belonged to God, not to himself, or to the Corinthians, Christians, Paul subtly addressed one of the major problems hindering the Corinthian church. Thinking highly of themselves, the Corinthians felt too great a sense of ownership over the church. Paul reminded believers at Corinth that they were sanctified, and that is that they had made had been made distinct by the Holy Spirit for service to the Lord because of the sanctification they were expected to live holy lives. In this, they were like all other believers who worshiped the Lord. After fully identifying himself and his purpose, and after addressing the church and its purpose, Paul offered the Corinthian believers a Christian greeting. The apostles said that grace and peace come from God the Father and Jesus the Lord. By saying this, Paul reiterated that the Corinthians were the recipients of this grace, God's unmerited favor that leads to forgiveness of sins and acceptance into his family. And this peace, the ending of the hostility that had existed between sinners and God, that is the peace that we feel and that we experience and that we can enjoy. And we should ask ourselves today, what impact has God's grace had on my life? What impact has his peace had on my life? As is true of all of Paul's letters to churches, the apostle thanked God for the believers who were part of the church and then elaborated on the reasons for this thankfulness. In this letter to the Corinthians Christians, Paul mentioned the spiritual gifts that they were diligently exercising, while later in the letter Paul admonished them for misusing their gifts. Here Paul was grateful for the spiritual enrichment they enjoyed in Christ. He said that in every way, they had been blessed with a multitude of gifts. For example, God had given the Corinthians the ability to speak in tongues, to prophesy, to interpret tongues, and to discern spirits. No spiritual gift was lacking in the congregation. What Paul and his co-workers had declared about Christ had been confirmed in the lives of the believers at Corinth. Their behavior was transformed in measurable ways and their service for the Lord was dynamic and effective as they waited for the second coming. 
And we should ask ourselves today, in what ways am I using my spiritual gifts to help others? The Apostle Paul realized that the Corinthians faced many challenges. Even though they lived in a city that had become wildly known for its vice and idolatry, the Apostle said God would keep them strong in the faith. God would be faithful to the faithful. Paul promised that by the power of God's grace, Christ would find that the church had lived above reproach when he returned. Just as the Corinthian believers could count on God's faithfulness, so we can depend on his being faithful to us regardless of our situation or our circumstances. If we depend on him, God will enable us to be virtuous until Christ comes again. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Father. Thank you so much for your presence. Thank you so much for our special time with you, my Father. My God, we're so blessed that we can wake up in the morning and spend our time with you, Lord God, and just fellowship, Lord God, with sitting with our Father, with our best friend in Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God, you're instructing us, you're teaching us, you're leading us, God. We are speaking to you about anything and everything. We are having great conversations. We are having great intimacies, Lord. And that is what a relationship is all about. And we want to have a dynamic, Father God, we want to have a an intimate, Father, deep relationship with you, a relationship that is vulnerable, a relationship that is real, my Father. Lord God in heaven, thank you, my Father. Just like you gave the, the Corinthians grace in Jesus Christ, we pray that we always have the grace for today, my God, the grace for whatever it is that we cannot do, my God, in our own abilities, Father God, in our own limitations, in our own intelligence, my Father, with our own resources, my Father, that you step in, my Father, and that you make the difference, my God that the difference, my Father, is your blessing and your grace, my Father. Thank you, O oh God, that just like you gave the Corinthians, you enriched them in every way. You have enriched us in every way, my Father. You have enriched us in so many different blessings, my Father. So many different blessings that we can partake uh, in the United States of America, going to congregations, being a, 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 a family member of the Church of Christ, being able to congregate in fellowship with other Christian believers, my Father, being able to open a Bible and do it freely, my God. There are so many blessings, my Father, and we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all the spiritual gifts, my God, that you have given us, oh God. You have blessed us with spiritual gifts my God and what spiritual gifts my father can we surrender to you and put on the altar to you today my father help us to understand our, our spiritual gifts help us to understand our calling and our purpose help us to understand it Lord God accept it and see it as something good pleasing and perfect as your perfect will my father Thank you, Lord God, for keeping us strong and healthy, my God, keeping us strong to the end, strong in the faith, unmoving, unwavering, my Father. Help us, Lord God, to, to be strong for you, my God, to eat well and to sleep well. Help us, my Father. Help everyone, Father God, that suffers from insomnia, Lord. My God, sleep is so important, Lord God. And we just ask you, Lord, to a special anointing, Father God, a, a miracle healing for those people that cannot sleep at night, my Father. I pray, Father God, blessings of sweet sleep, my God. I pray, Father God, for a miracle healing over your children that cannot sleep, my Father. That is not normal, Lord God. That is not healthy, my Father. And Lord, I know, Father God, that you understand, my Father, that Father God, that that is not healthy, my Lord. And I just pray, my God, that you, Father, cover them, Father God, as they are not able to sleep, that you protect their minds, protect their hearts. But most of all, my Father, that you will provide, my God, maybe a medicine, maybe a doctor, Father God, 
whatever you need to use in order to heal them or just simply the anointing that breaks every yoke my god father god can heal them and i declare father god healing for those people that cannot sleep my father i thank you lord father god that you have called us into fellowship with your wonderful beautiful son he is the bridegroom of the church my father and we are the bride and we are the bride and and in that relationship of groom and bride there is great intimacy there is great love there is great father god grace my father my goodness lord god what a beautiful picture that depicts my father that you lord jesus are the bridegroom and we are your bride whether we are a man or a woman it doesn't matter it is a spiritual picture that we need to be able to see with spiritual eyes not in the natural this is something that we need to understand with our spirit and lord we just thank you lord father god that you have always been so faithful you were faithful father god to all of your people father god in biblical times my father you have been faithful you have delivered them you have fought for them you have defended them lord god and i am asking you lord god to do the same with us to each and every one of my subscribers each and every person that is listening to this audio my father i pray oh god in jesus name father that no weapon formed against us will prosper and every tongue that rises up against us we shall vindicate for that is the heritage of the children of the Lord my God father God we wake up in the morning and we put on father God the the um the mighty uh weapons of our warfare God we father God know that our weapons are not flesh and blood my father but they're mighty in the pulling down of strongholds Lord and I just thank you Lord God for the armor of God and we put on the armor we put on the helmet of salvation Lord God father God to think on things that are pure perfect and lovely we put on the breastplate of righteousness my God to cover our hearts and to protect our heart all the time we put on the belt of truth that we will know the truth and the truth set us free God we put on the sandals of peace my father we are carriers of peace my Lord and we lift up the shield of faith to extinguish every fiery dart every flaming arrow every satanic assignment every trap and every snare we send it to the pit of hell and to the lake of fire and we take up the sword of God which is the word of God and greater is he who is in me and you father God and he rather than he who is in the world greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world by faith we declare father god that no weapon father god can prosper against us O god for we have been covered by the blood of jesus the blood of the lamb in the mighty name of jesus and that is how we intercede and that is how we do spiritual warfare Thank you, Lord God, for the Corinthian church, Father God, in, in the, your times, my God. Thank you, Lord, Father God, that we are learning from them, Father God, in this day and age, in this in this time, my Father, as such a time as this, more than 2,000 years ago, my God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just praise you and give you all the honor, my Father, that you deserve for you are worthy and there is no God like you, my God. There is no God like Jehovah. You are an amazing Father, an amazing Lord, a provider, a healer, Father, and we lift up holy hands to you in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth, O oh God. Hallelujah. Amen. If you like this message, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, also like and share. If you know of anyone that needs to hear a message like this, maybe they're depressed, maybe they're anxious or fearful, maybe they're struggling with a situation in their lives, send them a gift today, the gift of hope, the gift of encouragement. Thank you for listening to my messages. Have a blessed day.